Hello, this is Edith Neumeyer, and I'm the author of the book, The Mystery of Adam. I'm going to make another video today about biblical gender equality, and today I'm going to talk about patriarchy. Now, I know there's a lot of um, talk nowadays about um, taking patriarchy out of the church. And of course, out of the family as well. So there's like a war against patriarchy going on. And that's what I kind of want to talk about today. Kind of look, search, where did this patriarchy start? Okay. And of course, we're going to have to go all the way to Genesis to find the root. Now, the root, of course, is in the fall of the human being. And when I talk about the human being, I'm talking about both the man and the woman. Because God gave both of them the name Adam. Okay? So both of them, God made both of them human being in the beginning. And he made them one in chapter 1 of Genesis. And he did not divide them until chapter 2. So when did this patriarchy start when the man and the woman disobeyed God. Not just the man, not just the woman. It was not just the woman that was deceived. It were, They were both deceived. And this deception continues until today. Both men and women today are deceived. And matter of fact, they are greatly deceived. They have been deceived for 6,000 years. Okay, both of them, there is no difference between men and women when it comes to deception. Okay, we have just as many, matter of fact, more false teachers out there than false women, men teachers than false women teachers. Okay, so if you're going by that, men are more deceived than women. But of course, women are kept in their place. And their mouth is being and their mouth is being shut. So okay, it looks like um, right now we have more false male teachers than women teachers. But no, both were deceived. Okay, now just because says the woman was deceived does not mean the man was not deceived. Okay, we are jumping to false conclusions all the time. Why? Because we're deceived. Okay. Because we're deceived. So, where did this all start? Well, again, it started with the fall. Right after the fall, the consequence of the fall was that the woman's desire shall be for her husband, but he shall rule over her. Okay? So, right there, we see um, that things have been put in place. So, now let's look how God created man and woman in the beginning and how that was different from how it turned out afterwards and how that turned into patriarchy. Okay, so in order to do that, we're going to have to go to Genesis 2. And remember, I said that God split or divided the human being. He created the human being, man and woman, in one. And then he said it was not good for this human being to be alone. And you have to go to the original text to, text to actually get this better. Okay, Because the translations many times are false. They use man, um, which really should um, refer to humankind. But people always, when they read man, they, they almost always assume it is a male being. And also, um, that is done in, uh, you know, Genesis. So, I'm reading right now in Genesis 2, and it is verse 20. So, here again, we can see this mess up. So, the man gave, or the, gave names to all the livestock, the birds in the sky, and all the wild animals. Now, this original word is Adam, Ha-Adam, 
which in Hebrew translated is that's Hadam is the Hebrew word translated English that would mean human being. So the human he created this human being from the ground, and this human being gave these animals names. Okay, but for Adam, and he kept the name there, which everybody assumes it's the name of the male being. Okay, but that didn't happen until later either. That the male being actually took that name Adam for himself and renamed the woman. Okay, that didn't happen until after the fall, after the the male uh, being uh, takes over um, the authority. Okay, so but for Adam, which is the human being, original text Adam, no suitable helper was found. So no suitable helper was found for the man and the woman because they were together. Okay, so he's saying this combination human being. There was no suitable helper found. Okay, so what does he do? He causes a sleep, and then he takes the side. Rib is an absolutely false translation. He takes the side from the human being. Okay, not from the man, as some um, translations. Unless you think man uh, means human being, he closes the side. He takes the whole side. Okay. Closes the side, and that completed the male being, okay, the man. And then he does something to the woman, to the side he took, and that that was then the 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 woman, okay. So rib is a false translation. You have to put side in there. And I'm telling you, I've done the studies, and it is extremely clear. Every other Section of the Bible where that word is used, Sela, original Hebrew word, is always side. It's never rib. It, it cannot even. It's not even close to rib. Okay, side of a mountain, side of a door. You name it. It's always side. Okay. So then, when he did, um, then that's the first time when we actually read the name man and woman. Ish. Hebrew ish and isha, okay, for the woman, and then the man said, "Now this is bone of my bone and flesh, or and the flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman, which is actually、um, isha." Okay, so now God says, "That's why a man leaves his father and mother, and is united to his wife." And they become one flesh. Now, see this. Here, the man leaves father and mother, and is united to his wife. Okay, what does it say? United to his wife. Why does it say united to his wife? Because they were one in the beginning. It's very clear here. That is why a man leaves father and mother and is united. To his wife, they had to be、um, together before in order to say that he needs to be united to his wife, and they become one flesh, okay, or one flesh again, as some translations say it. So here is the order how things need to be done before the fall. A man leaves father and mother, and unite and gets united. With his wife. So, how in the world are we doing that today? After the fall, what happened? Well, after the fall, that was reversed. Why? Because the man took over the ruling. He took over uh, uh, the authority over the wife. He started ruling over the wife. And so, after that, if you look in the Old Testament. Women leave the other family, and they cleave to the man. Well, they can't cleave to the man, but they connect to the man. Okay, and now she becomes part of his family. Okay, 
he does not leave his father and mother and becomes part of the woman's family. He becomes part of, um, she becomes part of his family. That's why we have patriarchy. Patriarchy was caused by the fall. Before the fall, it was not patriarchy because the man left father and mother and cleaved to his wife. Now, it does not mean that the wife was in charge, okay? They became one flesh. And when you become one flesh, you again became, become equal, okay? None is in charge. Not the woman, neither the woman, nor the man. But after the fall, it was differently. The wife had to leave father and mother and stay with her husband. And now the husband would rule over her. And that is called patriarchy. So that was the fall of, I mean, that was the result of the fall. Not because God created it, because God created something very different. Now, when we look at this, this is also a foreshadowing of what Christ or Messiah is going to do, okay? Messiah will leave father and mother. Now, he doesn't necessarily have a mother, but he left heaven, okay? He left his um, origin, and he will cleave to the church, and they will become one flesh, not um, unequals. They will become equals, become one flesh. There is no difference between, um, you know, the, the bridegroom and the bride. They are one now. Um, when uh, Jesus comes back, they will be one. Okay, one unit. Um, and that means really they will treat each other equal. Okay, they will submit to each other. Okay, so meet each other. And that's what we see in Ephesians, that the woman submits to the man, but the man submits to the woman as well. It's not said the woman or the man is submitting to the woman, but when you read what the man is um, supposed to do, to die for, the, for his wife, to give himself up for his wife, that's dying to himself. Okay, he no longer lives, but his wife, he is concerned about the wife's welfare only, not his own. He will give his own life. And that's what really is a picture of what Christ did. He gave himself up for his bride. And because of that, both submit to each other and they become one. Okay? You cannot become one when one is ruling over the other. That is not oneness. That's another thing that happened after the fall, there is no longer a oneness. There is now one ruling over the other. And that's exactly what is the problem with patriarchy. Now, I am not totally condemning patriarchy because good things, of course, come out of patriarchy um, as well. Um, because we're living in a fallen world, Bad things happen in a fallen world. And sometimes a protective uh, man is very, very important. You know, women traditionally are weaker than men. Okay, they're not as strong. They are really um, even weaker because of childbearing. So they're in a very vulnerable position. Many and times in their life, uh, in the past, women would get lots of children. Ten children was pretty normal. Seven, you know, whatever. Uh, the more, the merrier. And during that time, she was very vulnerable. And she needed a man to protect her. Today, it's a little bit different. But we're talking about historically. So, patriarchy patriarchy is not necessarily all bad. It is bad when um, it's being misused. 
And I am not saying we should be staying under patriarchy. When you become a believer in Messiah, you're supposed to live under new rules. You're not supposed to live under the uh, the sinful nature. You're supposed to change and become more like Christ. Then you don't live under sin. That means your conduct uh, towards your wife needs to become a different one as well. So then you will be able to have a more um, an, a, a relationship that was more intended by God, where actually the man is going to leave father and mother and cleave to his wife, and they become truly one flesh. Okay, they become true equals that submit to each other and have their wealthy each other's wealthy well-being in mind so this is what i wanted to address today i'm not coming down on patriarchy but patriarchy is the system that the world is under so the system that is under sin so when we become saved or in the church this we need to change. The church needs to change the, uh, their approach because they are supposed to be not under sin anymore. So the sinful rules do not should not rule their life. But the new Christ-like or pre-flood um, rules should rule our life. So we are going back to the rules that God put in place before the flood. I mean before the flood before the fall, which is what I just read. Now, Jesus also mentioned that in Matthew, I believe, 19, when he talked about divorce, okay? He said the same thing. You know, he said, therefore a man shall leave father and mother and cleave to his wife, and they become one flesh, okay? So again, showing this original intent. What was the intent of the Old Testament and even uh, of the um, the law of Moses was still supporting this um, patriarchy. Even the law of Moses was supporting this patriarchy. I mean, not totally, but the Jews lived out the the worldly um, system. Okay, so that's why Jesus says said. You know what? Think about what God put in place. But they, of course, didn't get it. They didn't get that. I mean, how many people really get what Jesus said? Um, they always take things wrong because they're still living in a fallen mindset. They're still living by a fallen mindset. And when you have a fallen mindset, you cannot see what God is really telling you. Um, because that's what he says. He says, man, leave father and mother and cleave to your wife. And become one flesh with her. Okay, don't rule over her. You're not her master. You know, you're not the master over your wife. That's exactly what he's saying here. That's what Jesus said when he talked about um, divorce. So, but I'm not talking about divorce today. I'm talking about more uh, patriarchy. So, yes, in this world, we will have patriarchy. And sometimes it is actually good. Sometimes it's bad. Why? Because it's a fallen world system. Now, when we're in the church and we are in a Christian marriage, that does not apply. Okay? Patriarchy should not apply in the church, should not apply in the Christian marriage. In the church, there should be no hierarchy whatsoever. Everybody is equally participate or should be equally participating in the church. Read 1 Corinthians 12 and 14. It makes it extremely clear. No hierarchy whatsoever. The man is not over the woman. No place in the Bible, in the New Testament, does it say that the man is over the woman. No place. The man is not well no, over in authority over the woman. No place. Okay. Why? Because Christ came and put away with the old system, with our old nature. And so when that old nature is gone, 
we are going to the pre-fall conditions. Okay, so I hope that um, you know was helpful, and I want to add this, you know, to my Facebook page, the Mystery of Adam, and um, also, of course, to my um, subject of the Mystery of Adam. Um, so I will close for today. Read those verses again and think about it and let the Holy Spirit guide you. Again, I'm not for patriarchy, but I cannot condemn it um, because it's part of the fallen world system. And God is the only one who can, uh, you know, condemn it. And uh, it will go away if we're truly living for, for Christ. Then it will go away. But you cannot expect it to go away um, any other time. You can fight it and, you know, it, it will come right back. All right. I will finish up for today and I will talk to you later.